you'd like to access the full text of our service for today, including the words for the, our hymns, then you can download these via a link on our website or our Facebook page. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help, and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, 
Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The Word of the Lord. The Antiphonal Psalm, Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your, In your righteousness, righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, O God, and from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoers and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have been my strength. Your praise shall always be with you. My mouth shall recount your mighty acts and saving deeds all day long, though I cannot know the number of them. I will begin with the mighty works of the Lord God. I will recall your righteousness, yours alone. O God, you have taught me since I was young, and to this day I tell your wonderful works. Glory to the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will ever will be. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Since you are eager for spiritual gifts, strive to exceed them for building up the church. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray for the power to interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unproductive. What should I do then? I will pray with the spirit, but I will pray the mind also. I will sing praise with the spirit, but I will sing praise with the mind also. Otherwise, if you say a blessing with the spirit, how can anyone be in the position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving since the outsider does not know what you are saying? For you may give thanks well enough, but the other person is not built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers and sisters, do not be children in your thinking, rather be infants in evil, but in thinking be adults. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the synagogue at Nazareth, Jesus read from the book of the prophet Isaiah and began to say, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me that this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do hear also in your hometown the things that we, we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah. 
when the heaven was shut up three years and six months. And there was a severe famine over all the land, yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a widow of Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. He went down to Capernaum, a city in Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbath. They were astounded at his teaching, because he spoke with authority. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's time for the sermon. I think whenever this Sunday comes around and we hear the Gospel that I've just read, it reveals a very sobering thought for any preacher. Because it contains, according to St. Luke, the very first sermon Jesus ever preached. How did it go? Was it listened to and well received? Au contraire. It appears that the first sermon Jesus ever preached ended in uproar and his being chased out of town by an angry mob. Hasn't happened to me yet. As someone once said, good preaching always encourages, whilst at the same time pointing out just how far we still have to go to reach our goal. And there is a, an amusing story told of a young priest who on arrival in his new parish, preached exactly the same sermon, word for word, four weeks in a row. And after the fifth delivery, a deputation arrived at the rectory to complain about this. And he simply said, I'll start to preach a new sermon when I see some evidence that the first one has made a difference. When Jesus began his public ministry in his hometown of Nazareth, the initial reaction of the locals to his preaching was very favourable. He spoke fluently and simply, but with authority, and they liked his words when they first heard them. But as the penny dropped, and they realised that they were being challenged to change their ways, the message of Jesus became very uncomfortable, and one they simply could not accept. And when Jesus continued, saying that no prophet was accepted in his hometown, he was clearly identifying himself with the long line of prophets who suffered a similar fate. We get a glimpse of this in the reluctance of Jeremiah in today's first reading. He may have been young, but Jeremiah was no fool, and he knew that what God was asking of him would be difficult and would bring him much hardship and opposition. Nevertheless, Jeremiah went on to be a great prophet, courageous in his teaching, in the face of enormous persecution amongst his people. And of course, St. Paul was never shy to use a prophetic tone in his many letters to the churches. In today's epistle from his first letter to the church in Corinth, he reminds the young Christians that their enthusiasm in the faith must be for the glory of God and not their own aggrandizement. I would rather speak five words with my mind than 10,000 words in a tongue. Jesus had come to preach the good news regardless of how well it would be received. What happened on that day in Nazareth was to be repeated over and over again during his ministry with crucifixion as the inevitable final outcome. Although today's Gospel is about the rejection of Jesus, the greatest prophet of all, the work of prophecy continues in every generation, as people are invited to witness to Christ, not simply with words, but with their lives. This mission of Christ points to our mission, which we received at our baptism, to witness to the values which he represents. Every Christian is by nature an apostle, to whom God has entrusted other people. We are to take a stand with Christ against friend and foe, and often a stand against our own weaknesses. At home, it may be the call to love more tenderly, 
showing patience when irritated by shortcomings among friends and neighbours, a readiness to excuse and overlook sharp words, at work a dedication to the job in hand and a refusal to tolerate shoddy workmanship. God has called us to this particular work, but he has not promised easy success or popularity. There will be moments when we will have to stand up and be counted, and our moral worth severely tested. To go against the trend and shake people out of their complacency may not be well received, but there is the call to be a prophet. People are too comfortable in their ways and they resent interference. As it was with Jesus, so it is with his church. Christ is in every one of us. Either we honour him or deny his presence. But what we do to him is done to ourselves. Yes, all of our readings today are there to challenge us. And the challenge that we face is to realise that our whole lives are spent learning who Jesus is and how to live the fullness of salvation he came to offer us. We do this in simple, everyday ways, such as seeing the face of Christ in the person in need, accepting those who are not part of our inner circle, being transformed by words of challenge from unexpected people and events. Our lives are our sermon, and each of us is a living sermon. Before God formed us in the womb, God knew that each of us would be unique. And our uniqueness means that there is a sermon that only we can preach by our lives. There are aspects of God's love and concern for our world which only we can reflect. It is proclaimed differently by other people and their lives. But our lives count. Our relationship with God, the experiences we have had that others have not had, make us uniquely qualified to be witnesses to the gospel and preachers of it. Yes, it's time for the sermon. Let us pray. God of all the prophets, you knew us and chose us before you formed us in the womb. Fill us with faith that speaks your word, hope that does not disappoint, and love that bears all things. For your sake, until that day when we shall know you fully, even as we are known by you. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. We join now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>
Through Christ, whoever lives to make intercession for us, let us pray to the Lord. This week, we invite you to please pray for, in the world, for those affected by COVID-19, for Myanmar and Afghanistan, and for those affected by severe weather. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the province of the Indian Ocean. In the Mission to Seafarers, we pray for MTS in South Africa, in Durban, Port Elizabeth, Richards Bay and Southern Art Bay. In our diocese, we pray for the province office of Nippon Seiko Kai, for the work of the district committees of the church. For those who are sick or in special need, we continue to pray for Cathy Langley, Riley, Stepha, Kurt Koch, Geraldine and Chester Gibson, Daniel Acton and Lisa Zubak and for those who have died, including Janet Brown, we pray for the repose of their souls. Lift up our hearts to their heavenly places and inspire us to serve you as a royal priesthood. Let all peoples acknowledge your kingdom and grant on earth the blessing of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send down upon us the gift of the Spirit and renew your church with powers from on high. Help us to proclaim the good news of salvation and grant us the needful gifts of your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, through your grace we are your people. Through your Son you have redeemed us. In your Spirit you have made us your own. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us commend the world for which Christ prays to the mercy and protection of God. May peace abound and righteousness flourish that we may vanquish injustice and wrong. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace and justice and reconciliation throughout the world. We pray for the honouring of human rights and for the relief of the oppressed. We give thanks for all that is gracious in our lives. Make our lives bear witness to your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the renewal of the church in faith, love and service. We pray for Ignatius, our bishop, for Yokohama Christchurch, for Father Andrew, our rector, and for the life of this parish. We pray for the Diocese of Yokohama, the Nippon Seiko Kai, and for the Anglican Communion and the community of God throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our families, friends and neighbours. We pray for this local community and for all people in their daily life and work. We pray for the young and the elderly and all who are alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in need, for the sick, sorrowful and bereaved. We pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing. We give thanks for human love and friendship and for all that enriches our daily lives. Make our wills eager to obey and our hands ready to heal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have departed this life. Bring comfort to the dying and gladden their hearts with the vision of your glory. Give rest to the departed and bring them with your saints to glory everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for human skill and creativity 
and all that reveals your loveliness. Make our voices one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. For God, his blessed Son, came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that having this hope we may purify ourselves, that when he comes again with glory and power we may be made like him. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today and forevermore.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.